What's going on everyone? In this video, we're gonna be showing you how to tape your walls and ceilings using an automatic taper. If you're not already familiar with how to use an automatic taper, we strongly recommend that you check out our beginner's guide to using an automatic taper. So first thing we're gonna do is fill this bad boy up. So to do that, we're going to disengage our drive mechanism. We're going to flip our taper upside down onto our gooseneck. And before we do that, we wanna make sure that you do prime your pump so you can see We've got mud already coming through. You definitely don't wanna pump mud, or I mean air, sorry. You don't wanna pump air into your tube. So we're gonna pump this up. I got my fingers at the top here so I can tell when that plunger is gonna reach the top. And there we are right there, just about full. We don't wanna overfill. Now I'm going to re-engage our drive mechanism. I'm gonna pull down on the cutter sleeve to cut myself a new length of tape, and I'm going to raise my cutting sleeve, and you can see it advances the tape. Now you can see there's no mud there, so what I'm going to do is just manually feed the drive mechanism as I'm raising the tape with the cutter sleeve so that I could advance a little bit of mud on the tape and now we're ready to take that to the wall. So now's a good time to go over how you should carry your automatic taper. You wanna carry it just above the control sleeve like this. A lot of people for the first time make the mistake of trying to carry it by the control sleeve and it's sliding up and down on you all the time and it's not very comfortable, not to mention it's extra wear and tear on all these moving parts. So you wanna carry it just above the control sleeve. You can see I have a few inches of lead tape so if it drags I'm not shorting myself on the wall and as we start to pull ahead moving forward here you want to lead with the automatic taper so as soon as you get a little bit of room away from the wall you want to run it on an angle so you're leading with the taper you don't want to be holding it perpendicular to yourself trying to walk backwards like this you want to get it on an angle so that you're leading with the head of the taper and you can comfortably walk sideways and now you can see I'm just at the corner here and you want to cut your tape about three to three and a half inches short because your cutting blade is a little further back so you want to compensate for that so you want to cut it, it'll seem like you're cutting short, but by the time you roll out that extra two inches, you'll get right to the corner. So when you're starting a new tape, you wanna get in the habit of rolling your drive wheels against the wall, and I'll show you why that is. So for example here, you can't see my tape. I haven't raised my cutter sleeve since my last cut. So when I go to raise my cutting sleeve, you can see that that tape is dry. So before you start a new seam, you'd wanna roll your wheels, just the wheels. You're not pinching your tape to the wheels yet because your tape hasn't been raised. So you wanna just run your wheels on your tape, then you could advance or raise your cutter sleeve and now you can see that there is mud on that tape and you're ready to start taping. So that's called loading or charging your head. So same thing, just gonna give it a little zip up the wall, but load some mud onto the tape. Now there's no dry spot behind that tape. So we just finished our cut in the corner here. So now I'm going to advance my drive mechanism on the wall, advance my tape and start rolling. Again, we wanna get the taper head out in front of our bodies, have our taper on an angle so that you can lead comfortably with the head. And as we get about two and a half, three inches from the, from the wall, we pull, cutting that tape. And you can see how close we got to the corner. Beautiful, now our corner tape is gonna cover that tape. So now same thing, we just finished cutting our tape at the corner there. We're going to roll our drive wheel on the wall, advance our tape so that we got some mud on there. You can see it is coming out the head there. So that's again called charging or loading your head. Now we're gonna pinch our tape to the wall with our drive wheels. Lead with the head of the taper and cut about two and a half, three inches back. And there we go. So now we're gonna start on the ceiling. I'm gonna charge my head a little bit. You can see the mud coming out the top there. Now I'm gonna advance myself a few inches. Now with the ceilings, it's important that as soon as you're able to get your creaser wheel up, as soon as you have enough clearance there, you wanna get that creaser wheel pushing that tape tight to the ceiling, and then you can let go of it. But that's just to ensure that this, as you start moving along down the rest of the seam, that this doesn't come loose and end up falling down and hitting you in the back of the head. 
So another tip, another trick when you're doing ceilings, you can see here, if I continue to roll with both my wheels on the ceiling, it squishes the mud out from either side of the tape and you get a lot of over dripping that ends up on the floor or on yourself. So one trick is to rock your tape back and forth. So you can see I'm only taping with one side of the, of the gear on the ceiling and the other side is hanging down. So taping it at an angle and then every couple of feet you just want to touch back with both and then you can go again on an angle, pivot back with both wheels pivot back on an angle, pivot back. And then when you get to the end, you want both wheels on there, you cut. So now you can see at the start here, well actually I'll just go ahead, I'll do this seam over here and I'll run it with both wheels so that you can understand. I'm gonna charge the head, advance my tape. And now this one, I'm gonna run it with both wheels on the ceiling. And you can see mud is starting to drip along the sides. So you can see the difference between these two seams. This seam here, we taped with both wheels tight to the ceiling. And this one over here, we pivoted back and forth between two and one wheel. So on this side, you can see all that excess mud when you're running it with both wheels. You're, when your mud is thin, it causes a big mess on the floor. So if you look on the floor here, you can see that there's drips all along that seam. Whereas over here, there's hardly any. We only got one or two at the start there. So that's the benefits of pivoting back and forth between one and two wheels. You're not applying full contact the whole length, so you're not getting that extra spillage, that extra excess mud leaking out the sides. I also want to mention that when you go to cut your tape, you want to come to a complete stop with your taper. Because when you pull down, and as soon as you let go, that automatically returns to the neutral position. So if you're still rolling while you're cutting, you're essentially gonna do a double cut on your tape and that's how you end up with tape jams. Because as you're rolling, well you can see here's a perfect example. So there's a double cut right there. So my blade cut one way, cut the top half, and then as I kept moving up, the blade came back in the opposite direction and didn't quite cut through that tape. So this would end up jamming our taper head. So that's why it's important to come to a complete stop before cutting your tape. So I hope that quick video helped. For more tips and tricks, make sure to check out our other educational videos with Level 5 Tools.